A lot of your uh, viewers are aware of us as an avionics manufacturer for general aviation aircraft. We have, have been a, had a very successful line of products in ADS-B out systems, ADS-B in systems, and aircraft displays. In the uncrewed system space, we're also an avionics manufacturer, but we're also more of a solutions provider, an infrastructure provider. So we collect and integrate data and deploy networks in support of uncrewed systems operations for beyond visual line of sight. And that includes command and control radios, and that includes a detect and avoid data. So ADSB data, radar data, other systems that can keep all aircraft in the air separated safely. The challenge is you have to take something that is very broadly defined in the crewed regulations to say you have to see and avoid another aircraft, and then you have to take that and define that very technically. What is good enough to see and how far away do you have to be to avoid? And so industry is trying to figure that out, FAA is trying to figure that out, and it's done through multiple projects and demonstrations. The FAA still wants a pilot in command of a drone, even though systems can't operate autonomously, it's much easier to get approvals if they feel there's a human in the loop from a trust perspective and the human's making decisions based on data that's being presented to them. So two pieces, right? Um, and it's all encapsulated in something we call Skyline. And Skyline is a, a system of systems that integrates radios for command and control and detect and avoid data. So radios for command and control, why is that important? All radios behave differently, and there are different radio types for different altitudes, different geographies. Sometimes LTE is a great solution. Sometimes there's no LTE at all, right? Sometimes you need a system that has a TSO to be integrated onto an aircraft. Sometimes you're over the ocean and you need SATCOM. And so what our Skyline system does is it integrates all of those radios into a single solution and intelligently selects which one of those radios is the best link at any given time. So you eliminate something called a lost link. And a lost link is effectively, you've lost control of the aircraft because you're no longer controlling it. It's flown outside of your range or something like that. And so our systems are effectively eliminating lost link because we're integrating all of those different layers of, of radio types. And then we deploy ADS-B networks. We integrate with radars to detect aircraft that don't have ADS-B on them in order to bring that into the solution so the UAS operator can see that there's something else out there and avoid that. The FA has made it the requirement of the drone operator to avoid the manned aircraft and not the other way around. If you're familiar with EFBs like ForeFlight and you're looking at you know, aircraft on a map, very similar data, right? So you're looking at very similar data, aircraft on a map. You'll have possibly different icons based on what the source data for that aircraft is. Ultimately, there will be guidance given. So, you know, turn northwest to avoid the aircraft coming in or stay below 400 feet aircraft nearby. You know, there could be more guidance coming along those lines like that. On command and control perspective, that is more autonomous, the switching between links. And so what the operator sees is which link is active at any given time and the signal strengths. There may be the ability at some point to manually switch, but the system is automatically doing it now. So depending on whether you choose to integrate a SATCOM radio and an LTE radio or a ISM radio, so it's, it's a little bit of a mix and match. There's a core component called a multi-link, which is the system that decides which system to choose, right? Uh, but the radios, everything we build is very, very small, measured in grams, right? And uh, and and so those are you know typical systems that go on on most drones.